Welcome back, and thanks for joining me as I paint up this 3D printed <clears throat> Guardians of the Sewer Ratmen Blood Bowl team. I painted these up for a commission a little while back, and I figured I'd record some footage of the process along the way, as well as give my thoughts on my first commission work. Quick disclaimer, this Blood Bowl team is also just a one-off video, and after this it'll be back to my usual board game videos or Song of Ice and Fire. The person who commissioned the work owns JG Forge, a printing shop focused mainly on Blood Bowl and War Master, so he actually printed the models himself and sent them to me. Honestly, the quality of these prints is pretty excellent. The details are crisp and the layer lines are only noticeable in the reflections of a fairly intense light, even on the large round surfaces like pauldrons. And once I prime the minis and get a layer or two of paint on them, the layer lines effectively completely disappear. Of course, since I got paid money to paint this team, I'm sure it biases my review of the prints, but for the listed prices I honestly think these teams are a really good deal. I've done just enough amateur 3D printing to know how much work it is to get nice, crisp, and non-brittle prints. Anyway, back to the mini painting. I made sure to clarify the expectations for painting style and color scheme beforehand, and here are the main points. I would replicate the sort of hybrid, gritty, comic style that I used to paint my Darkest Dungeon minis, including the thick black shadows, random black scratchy shading, and fairly intense and chunky highlights. The color scheme would be based on the Baltimore Ravens team, which meant as a general rule, black helmets, purple torsos, and black pants. The helmets have this cool look of black with two purple tapered lines running down the middle, but on most of the rats on this team, they aren't even wearing helmets, or if they are, the helmets are not conductive in painting this way. I did mean to paint this pattern on the hoods of the gutter rats, but honestly, I just completely forgot about it. The fur would be a warm brown, with pink tails and paws. The purples would be pushed pretty far with highlights, much more intense than the subdued dark purple of the uniform. And lastly, I got a decal sheet sent along to put numbers on each of the team members. So, expectations and plan in place, I dove into painting. I started with a black airbrush prime, then a zenithal airbrush of light gray. I paused the airbrushing to dry brush the minis white, which if you're familiar with the term, is sort of a careful slap chop approach. Then I mix up a purple speed paint color I like, I thin it down, and fairly carefully airbrush it all over the purple cloth and armor surfaces. After applying that, I also airbrush a couple progressively lighter lilac highlights onto the purple, thinned to a nice airbrush consistency. Pretty much any of the time that I say I thinned a paint in the airbrush, what I mean is that I have a little bottle of roughly 2-ish parts Vallejo Flow Improver mixed with 8 parts water, and I use this mix to thin the paint until it flows nicely through my airbrush at my desired PSI. I try to keep the PSI lower to something like 16 or 20-ish when I'm carefully spraying small details on the models, and I try to keep it at 20 or a bit over in general when I'm spraying things like base coats or large surfaces. For this airbrush work, and probably for a lot of different steps throughout this video, I want to sort of slow down and show a lot of my brush work, instead of just showing two seconds of a clip and then going on to the next step. So definitely feel free to fast forward to the next timestamp whenever you want to, or just do whatever else you want to with your life, I'm, I'm not your boss. Anyway, I do the same thing with the brown as I did with the purple, finding an appropriate color and carefully applying that, then mixing an appropriate highlight color. On some of the models I started with the acrylic paint, and then I airbrushed the speed paint in the shadows, and on some models I did it the other way around. Starting with the speed paint seemed easier, since it let me overspray the brown onto other surfaces less, but honestly either way worked just fine.
The last airbrush step is working a pinkish skin color into the tails, paws, ears, and noses, and highlighting it pretty bright with the airbrush. These colors are all ending up fairly light and pastel right now, but that's actually what I want because I'll be darkening them down quite a bit fairly soon. There are some areas where I got a bit of spillover with the brown and pink being airbrushed too much onto the purple armor, and in those cases I just went back with my light lavenderish purple color, and I airbrushed that over the surfaces where needed. Next I apply a black speed paint to the appropriate cloth and metal areas, including the parts I'll paint as metallic later. I actually don't use a pure black speed paint, I mix a little bit of grey into it and thin it with medium, because I want to make sure I leave a little bit of room for the pure black shadows to stand out a little bit against it. Once that's done, I do a rough blend of two different contrast paints on the skin. On the pinkish skin areas I apply a thinned pink contrast paint, and on the rest of the skin I use a warm brown, also thinned with the appropriate medium. I worked pretty fast, so that while they were both wet I could sort of mix them together with my brushes and let them blend together. It complicates the process a bit, but I think it worked decently well. I do think the speed paints slash contrast paints are kind of making my careful airbrush work a little bit redundant, and maybe I just should have used washes instead of using speed paints. But either way, I'm committed now. I apply a purple speed paint mix pretty thickly on the armor, and then use a damp brush to wick away pigment from the top of the big armor panels. then a dark brown contrast paint on the Rat Ogre's wooden shoulder armor. Next I clean up the base with a warmish neutral gray. I'm almost ready to move on to the black wash and black lining stage, so I want to do that to the base at the same time. At this point I also pick out all the small bits and pieces remaining that need their own base coats. This includes all the little ropes and stitches and skulls on the Ogre, all of the teeth and claws, and all of the very dark metal colors. So while I let this footage play, I'll also talk a little bit about my commission painting mindset. I think the most important part of doing a good job here, honestly like with most things in life, is just having good communication. Things like sending them frequent pictures to keep them updated on the progress, making sure the color choices and effort level you'll be using are clearly stated, stuff like that. I think a huge part of making it a success is keeping them involved in the process and making it more like a conversation, rather than just their minis disappearing into a black box where at the end they might get something completely different from what they wanted. Good and frequent communication also lets them know that you're prioritizing the project and that you care about it as well. 
I also think it's very easy to fall into a sort of hourly wage mindset. Granted, if commission painting is your main source of income, going fast probably does matter, and I do think that artists deserve to be paid fairly for their work. But I decided from the start that this would take as long as it takes for me to paint these minis to a standard that I'm happy with. I didn't want to add the stress of forced deadlines into my painting time, since I don't enjoy working under time pressure, and so for me that would be a pretty quick way to make painting fairly unfun. Anyway, that's just my rambly and amateur commission painter thoughts, so back to the actual painting. While I've been talking, you probably noticed that I've also started liberally applying a black wash to the minis and their bases. And when I say liberally, I mean not totally drenched, but pretty dang thick. I tried thinning the wash with some water at first, but that just made it kind of disappear and do nothing after drying, so then I just went with a pure undiluted wash. I only avoided applying it to the large armor surfaces, and in those cases I just stuck with using it on the edges and trim, being sort of careful to get the wash only on the edges of the surface, and not on the flat armor panel. Then I start painting heavy black lining into the recesses, as well as thick black shadows under the arms, legs, and just on the lower portions of any of the larger surfaces. Just like with the Darkest Dungeon minis, this step is actually pretty easy, since the lines are thick and can be messy to get that scratchy shadow texture. At this point, I do like how it's coming along, but it's a little bit too dark. Also, the careful airbrushing work has been hidden a bit more than I'd like. Which is fine, but it also means that I've not only spent a good chunk of time airbrushing for little reason, but also I'll need to spend more time on building the colors up more later. Not the end of the world though, it's a pretty easy fix. A better method might have been just ditching the airbrush and doing speed paint base coats, maybe wet blending them together where useful, like pink to brown for the skin and fur for example. I painted over the surfaces with speed paint anyway, so as far as brush application it would take about the same time as that step took regardless. My approach of speed paint over the airbrushed surfaces also made it a bit darker than just a speed paint over a pure zenithal prime, so after the black wash and black shadows things got darkened down even further, and it all just got a little too dark. So first I start by highlighting up the fur, using this nice ochre color, and mixing in a bit of off-white ivory into it to apply highlights in several passes. I focus these highlights mainly on the upper sides of surfaces, trying to keep the pure black shadows untouched. For the pink skin I tried out this pale pink Pro Curl color, and it was a bit too intensely light of a highlight at first, so I switched to this darker brown rose color, sometimes with a little bit of magenta mixed in for a bit of extra vibrancy. Then it's onto the purple, which was a little tricky. The purple had to be a predominant part of the color scheme, so I made both the armor and all the surrounding cloth purple. But I wanted to make sure the armor and the purple read as different materials in different parts of the mini. I did this in a couple ways. First, by working slightly different hues of purple into the armor versus the cloth, and second, by highlighting the armor to much more of an intense, sort of shiny, reflective highlight color while the cloth got a little bit more of a muted highlight. I highlighted the armor up through a warm pinkish magenta color into a very bright white for the highlights, pushing it pretty far, almost to pure off-white. I also painted a sort of scratchy texture, but with the lines all following the contours of the armor in one direction, to sort of get an overemphasized brushed metal look. On the other hand, 
For the cloth, I mixed a very pale, sort of desaturated lilac highlight color, and I painted this on with very scratchy brush strokes, pushing it bright but not quite as intense as the armor. On the models with only purple cloth though, and no purple armor, I let myself go a little bit more extreme with the highlights to make that purple more of a focus, since the armor isn't there to take the spotlight. Then I move on to the cloth and armor. Because there are already so many intense black shadows all over the mini, I push the highlights here pretty far into gray, definitely further than I otherwise would for surfaces intended to read as black. Onto the smaller details, I went for the classic red Skaven eyes. I base coated them first with Chimera's The Red, which is a really intense red, and then I highlighted the raised center of each eye with this bright orange color. I put a tiny dot of off-white on the top of each eye, which could either be interpreted as a sort of bright reflection or as the actual iris of the eye. Honestly, both interpretations work just fine. There are a few models on this team that are carrying footballs, and the request was I paint them sort of a warp stone green. I block in a very light mix of green and white, just as a starting point, and then I dry brush really heavily on and around the footballs with this bright green color. At this point, I've spent a good chunk of hours on this project, so to be honest, I'm kind of phoning it in a little bit with my effort level on this green glow effect. I just do some further dry brushing by mixing in a darker black green color, done in several stages and getting lighter in my application each time. Then I thin some pure white ink with a bit of water, and I carefully apply it into the recesses in the footballs as a sort of glow from within effect. I glazed and thinly painted my dark green color on the ends of the footballs and any of the outer edges, generally any of the areas that are further away from that inner glow. Quick sidebar as well, I heavily dry brushed the bases with this stone gray color, and I did this now before finishing up the glow effect. Then I really gently airbrushed this shamrock green speed paint color onto the footballs and surrounding surfaces. I couldn't really be bothered to film this. Honestly, it was just a small spritz around each spot. After that, it's just some miscellaneous final highlights on the stitches and rope, the wood, and the claws and teeth and skulls and such. Then I paint the base rims black, and I'm almost at the finish line. This is actually my first time trying to apply decals, but luckily it turned out okay. I carefully cut each number out from the transfer sheet, and then I soak that decal in some warm water for a couple minutes. I used a little plastic paint well palette, and it worked really nicely for this. These decals are going on all of their cute little belt buckles, so first I apply some Vallejo decal fix to the belt buckle that I'm putting the transfer on. While it's still wet, I did a careful dance with holding the model, holding the decal in a pair of tweezers, and then trying to somehow use a brush to slide the decal off onto the model. I quickly found out that it was much easier to use a toothpick or a harder object to push the decal into place though, and then I used a brush for carefully smoothing out the bubbles in the decal. I also learned that it worked much better to prop the model up on my table at a convenient height and angle, so that both my hands were free to hold the decal in the right spot and push it onto the surface. After that, while it's still wet, I applied some Vallejo decal softener to the decal area, trying to keep it fairly thin. These belt buckle surfaces are pretty round as well, so the decals don't quite sit nicely on them. After a couple of attempts, I figured out the best way to fix this was to cut some little triangles out of each side of the decal, so that it sat more nicely on the round surface without big creases in the decal sides. Then I added some subtle scratches over the decals to tie them into the surface a little bit more, but I didn't want to do this too much since I wanted to keep them nice and readable. I should probably also mention, before applying these decals I sprayed the models with Vallejo Ultra Matte Polyurethane Varnish, and I also brushed this varnish over the decals after they had time to set. 
and now this team is ready to hit the table. I had a lot of fun on this project. I really enjoyed the character of these models, and in particular the rat ogre was really fun to paint. And again, don't count on me making a ton of Blood Bowl or Warhammer videos in the future. That's not to say that I won't be, but the next few videos will probably be continuing on board game painting projects, and in particular also starting to paint Oathsworn, which I am super excited about. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope I'll see you in the next one as well. In the meantime, take care of yourself, and have a great day.